Hey guys, Omar here for another Fuji X-T20 video. We got Superman with us, Supes is here. And he's gonna help us out with today's topic, which is how to get great colors right in your camera straight away. This video is for rookies, beginners. If you know how to set a custom white balance, you know about gray cards, and you know how to shoot raw and set your white balance later, you're an advanced user. This video is not for you. So color is very subjective. What are you going for? Are you going for pictures that are more blue, more uh, RNG? Now in camera language, colors are measured in what's called degrees Kelvin. Um, so daylight, for example, is in the 5000s Kelvin. Uh, your tungsten light bulb, like this lamp, is in the uh, 3000s. We're not going to dive deep into the science of all that, but I'm going to link up two videos which are awesome. Two photographers, videographers that explain Kelvin if you want to dive in deeper. But we're going to pretty much just try to show you how to get good colors from your Fuji and what the camera is thinking and what you should be thinking. Now for the most part, if you're outside, you can set your white balance to auto. The camera's pretty smart. The camera's colors I've been noticing, it does a great job. It does get confused if you're in an environment with a lot of yellowish lights, tungsten lights, and you set it to auto. It tries to adjust for those lights, but it just can't. If you're trying to photograph, uh, you know, someone sitting by a window and their face is just way too blue, you don't know why, well, you can take control of that. You can actually change the colors that you want in the photograph. So don't think that there's just a correct way to get colors. The colors, you pick the colors. You're in charge, man. So here's how you control white balance on your Fuji. If you go to the menu and you go to where it says IQ, which is the first menu, you actually see white balance at the bottom and you can pick different ones. The first thing is you have auto, then you have three custom ones that you can actually set and keep Maybe you have three different uh, situations. This is your K, I'll get back to that. That's actually my favorite. Daylight, which is a general setting for outdoors. Shade will give you a little bit more uh, yellow or orange. And you, have, you actually have three different fluorescing lighting sets. And then uh, the little tungsten light at the bottom. Okay, and then there's one called uh, underwater or aquarium, which I guess uh, combats a lot of blue. One of my favorite options on the Fuji to control color is to use the K scale. So let me show you that. Let's say you come up to this scene and you know you're looking at it. You know what the color should look like. So what you want to do is you go to the K setting and it gives you a bunch of temperatures. Now what's great is you get a preview of what your picture is really going to be like. If I warm up my picture, that means I go up higher, you'll start to see colors come in and you can stop where you feel that the picture looks like whatever you're going for, either what reality is or you wanna warm it up a little bit, okay? Or maybe you wanna freak out and just be a lot cooler. You want those blues and those reds to look a certain way. You can completely cool things down. So the one that gives you the most control is this K one because you're actually picking a temperature. K temperature is great, okay. but if you notice in this situation, auto, it does a pretty good job. It gets close, but I'll compare those two. There's the auto and there's the one that I chose with my K. Auto has more of a red tint. And these are slight differences that you would not notice otherwise. How about setting a custom white balance? A custom white balance is you know, you're telling the camera what gray is. Here's a little gray card that I have and the camera will then be smart. If it knows what this is, it will know what all those colors are supposed to be. So let's tell it. All you have to do is go to your white balance settings, go to custom, and if you go to the right, it gives you a little, little squarey poo there. Just put your gray card or a white piece of paper there and take your picture. Ooh, sometimes you get an under warning. Uh, that just means that you're underexposed, which I am because if I expose correctly, it's hard to see it on the Canon, you see? So let's try it again. Take a picture. Oh, sorry, that was just a dumb picture. Here we go. Set the white balance and it says completed. It's actually not completed. You have to hit OK to set it. And now it has a white balance that is the correct color. So all this white balance stuff is more important if you are shooting in JPEG or if you're shooting video. If you're about to shoot a video on a family vacation, you should check your colors first because it's harder to change colors later on video. 
But if you are shooting raw files, none of this really matters as much because you can actually change your white balance later in post-processing with raw files. So I'm gonna show you that a little bit now. So this is a JPEG I shot of myself looking fly. This was taken from balancing. I did a white balance on a gray card and shot. I'm finding if I balance the Fuji X-T20 on this gray card, this is from Lassalite, this gray card, that the images come out warmer. They have a nice warm tone to them. Now for this picture, I actually picked an auto white balance. If you pick auto white balance, I think the colors are more true or more what I prefer. Now let me show you shooting JPEG versus shooting RAW. So let's say you take a picture and there's incandescent lighting. So we have a very orangey picture here. We'll go to the develop module here in Lightroom. And what's tough is you can actually try to change your temperature later, but the colors start to get kind of funky, especially the reds. They turn into weird magenta pinks. Here's the raw file. So what's cool is you can actually take a, a little um, eyedropper tool in Lightroom and you can tell Lightroom, hey, that thing here is white. Or let me do undo that and actually just pick, I could just pick cap over here. I could just pick, I know that this is white. If you just click on that and then boost those colors, it kind of fixes all the colors for you there. If you are shooting JPEG, you're burning in those colors a little bit more. If you're shooting RAW, which is a file that's maybe five times the size, you're getting more information and you can play with the file a little bit more and change your white balance later. You can make it very warm if you want, you could cool it down if you want, um, and so you have more control that way. Here's a JPEG where I uh, used a temperature. So I picked the temperature and it's a JPEG and I'm happy with these colors. So, all right guys, so there you have it. Another Fuji X-T20 video. I hope that helps someone out there. Now you can get awesome pictures of your Superman out there. And if it all fails, just shoot a gross. Thank <laughs> you.